Don't do that. Welcome back to the channel Think Build Test. Today I'm going to be talking about this universal compact bender. So this can be used to bend rod, this can be used to bend flat stock and many other things and this is going to be my first time using a tool like this. So I'm not exactly here to tell you what you should do with it but there's some things that I was looking for for my own personal needs as far as space and storage that I could not find with any of these. Now, this is just a cheap one. This is made by Viver, but uh, they're all kind of the same make. Um, one of these joints happens to have an issue. I'll just weld it back up, but I can't make it as cheap as what I bought it. I'm not trying to advertise any kind of branding to you. I will leave a link below that you can go to for an affiliate. Uh, if you want to click on that, that's fine. So they make a taller one of these that comes on a post mount that bolts to the floor and it has some storage for all these attachments on it. But I don't have a space that I can dedicate bolting this to the floor. I don't want to deal with that. Secondarily, this one's made to be bolted to the top of a bench. I don't really have a bench that's going to be strong enough to resist pulling all this leverage. Uh, and I like to keep my benches free for multi-use as well. I have a couple of things in mind and y'all know how much I love two inch receivers and that's kind of where I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, I have a steel frame on my shop so in this video there may be a little bit of welding, there may be some two inch receiver action and I might look at a way to mount all these devices on this plate. So it has these nine attachments to use as blocks and stops and rollers for bending pipe. It has three pins, but I can probably keep these pins kind of left on the jig. There are a couple of these little spacers to help float the attachments. Hopefully we can come up with something together and maybe this will be an idea that you can use for your shop. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. Uh, rebar is cheap, it's weldable. I think that I'll just take some rebar pieces, maybe a little shorter than this, a little shorter than that, and I'll weld them around. Then I'll be able to sit these dies on them and uh, it'd be kind of a good way to store it and have all my stuff all here nearby it. So we'll see how this turns out.
So I'm using some scrap two inch receiver uh, that I had. We drilled these up one step from five eighths. I believe that's a 21, 30 seconds. I can't remember, but as you saw, the magnetic drill press is awesome. It's a game changer. Not having to be over these holes for minutes and minutes at a time and it goes through in about 15 seconds. If you can get set up with these annular bits, they're supposed to be able to go like 300 holes before you wear one out. On a twist bit, I'm sharpening it every 10 holes uh, when you're going through like 3 eighths. So uh, that's such a time saver for me. So no question, those are so sharp. They just eat right through it, keep them oiled up good, and they're supposed to last a long time. And they're fast. And they're within like 10% of the price of a twist bit, a good twist bit. My only real accessible beam in the shop is over here. So this is where I'm gonna mount my receiver hitch. And if you like this lift, uh, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. So my beam is right behind this board right here. And unfortunately, uh, the previous owners installed these switches here. So I may have to do some moving. I want my bar to be at optimal height where I have strength in my chest and my arm and I can see what I'm doing. So I want it to be about this high right here. So right about there is where I want to be. So I'll trim this out and then we'll weld in our receiver. I didn't expect the two by four to be behind there. It's not structural. It's just supporting this plywood was not expecting it to go that deep i decided to just make this wider and that'll give me enough room to put the pin in i like it being recessed So I found another good use for this FlexiMount GL1 hoist. Uh, this grid down here makes a great place for hanging parts and it's easy to hang a tarp on uh, for a little backdrop for some painting. A little makeshift paint booth if you had a big tarp here. Uh, you could hang lots of different parts for painting. So I think we're at the point where we want to paint this thing up and uh, see how it looks. So the paint's had time to dry. Let's take a look at what we've got.
Okay, so I'm new to using this tool. Um, I have some future projects coming up that you'll be able to see me using this thing and testing it out. I just want to give you my general impressions of the Vivor and the quality of it and why I bought this and not a $600 one. So uh, I did notice as I was taking the paint off this base plate, uh, they didn't really uh, prep the metal real good. It's kind of some rusty, unprepared surface uh, on the metal. But the thing about this is if you're going to be using this, then you're already a fabricator. So if by chance some weld or something doesn't hold up good, then it, I mean, you're here fabricating. You'll just weld it back. Uh, and the metal looks heavy. If I was doing this for a living, this might be a different thing. I might want to buy a $600 jig, but I don't have the floor space to be able to mount one permanently to the ground. So this, having this mounted to the beam in my shop is going to work great. Um, I may need to shim my square tubing, but I am able to get in here and remove the pin. So I added this side tubing. That way I'll be able to switch and move this if I'm doing a long bend. Okay, for those longer bends where the wall is going to get in my way, I'll be able to come around, bend it, and then to finish going around, I should be able to take this out. set it in the next notch, then finish my bend. So if I were worried about torquing this over too hard on a heavy bend, then I can always set myself up a pole in here, and then I can use that to get some scissor force together to press and bend. So uh, I'm gonna test these things, see how I like it, but this is the initial build. Tell me what you think. Uh, was this a good idea to not have a post going to the ground and be able to take this, move it, set it aside? Because I may only use this thing once a year and I, I want to have it, but I don't want it in my way. So I'll be able to just take that off, set it on a shelf. Now that I've got this all packaged up, I can now take this and move it up on my storage rack and get it out of my way. This lift ended up working great for painting. It's got lots of places to be able to get your coat hangers and paint parts and it can lift stuff off the ground and be at different heights. I think that that might work out as a good feature in the future. I'm planning on moving this outlet in the future, but I have some other things that need to kind of line up first. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this something that you would use? Make sure you're subscribed on the channel and we'll be testing this thing out and bending some metal for some future projects. We'll catch you on the next video.